Oh, I love you, Mzansi. I love you so much. Welcome to Training SA. It's a Thursday. <laughs> Elma, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Welcome to Training SA. It's a Thursday and we are hours away from the weekend. And tonight we have a very interesting episode in store mm -hmm. for you. My name is Maple, and in the hip-hop world, they call me Maplezi. Um, in my kingdom, they call me the Emperor of Umlazi. And to help me drive the show tonight are these women next to me with absolutely no titles. <laughs> Rufilwe and Elma. Did you just introduce yourself three times? Yeah. Okay. Because we are used to this disrespect mm. because Aquarian. Mm. Okay. So all in keeping, all in okay. character. Oh, wait, all right. I'm, I'm also Aquarian, that's right. not fair. <laughs> oh! Okay. So to, so to not keep, So to not keep Rufilia waiting any longer <laughs> as she has a metric dance to attend. It's a prom, baby. It's this prom. week, we started our week-long conversation under the hashtag, Tsa! In between the sheets. I hope they had that. And right as we took a closer look at sex, intimacy, and commitment in the millennial age. And tonight we wrap it up with some exciting guests. Over to you, Rafael. So relationships <laughs> can be a daunting space to navigate. Thank you, my player. They are layered. <laughs> They're informed by our frame of reference, our experiences, our outlook in life. You know, baggage, basically. And some people do believe in soulmates. Uh, happily ever after, finding that person that is just right for you, while others aren't bound by these concepts and make connections, you know, in the moment. Astrologists, however, have long used the uh, cosmic world of stars and planets to predict which zodiac, which zodiac signs are compatible, aligned, and could lead to passionate and fulfilling relationships, because that's what the kids want. Now, our first guest tonight is an astrologer who's no stranger to our TV screens. Yes. And our the newspapers, yes! To help us better understand relationships, intimacy, and sexual compatibility using the stars as our guide. Welcome, Linda. Hello. It's so good to meet exciting. you. We're discussing very wicked subjects. I'm so excited. <laughs> and you know, I have just finished writing a book called Horoscope Hotties Finding the Best Lovers in the Zodiac. Mm -hmm. And I went through each star sign and, mm -hmm. and looked at their technique I and, love that. and how they fitted in with, you know, each other. What did you find out about Aquarius? Aquarius talks a lot. <laughs> yes. Surprise. <laughs> Check. Literally. <laughs> Ma <blair. laughs> Is that it? No, 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 of course not. <laughs> That's just the opening. Who am, I, who am I compatible with? You know, the thing about Aquarians is... Aquarians are ahead of their time, and so everybody uh, is mystified by Aquarians and never quite understands or knows how to keep up with them. And so Aquarians are there to sort of drag the rest of us forward into the next century. Mm. So essentially, nobody is compatible mm. with you. It's very, it's very <laughs> difficult for, for Aquarians to find people, because mm. even Aquarians are not compatible with each other because they're all so unique. Mm. But, oh. So Aquarians have to sort of almost downgrade themselves to fit in with the rest of us mere mortals. We, wow. You know, I've been saying this. So, Linda, <laughs> what's the science be behind astrology and, and compatibility and okay. intimacy? Very simply, if I look at it from the simplest aspect, all of the signs are, um, work through one of the elements that make up the universe, fire, earth, air, and water. Mm -hmm. So, I would say, generally, we look, like, we, we look for our energies that are like us. We look for people who are like us. Mm -hmm. We often think that opposites attract, but actually they don't attract for very long. They just attract for a moment and maybe it's quite fun in bed for a moment. But essentially we're looking for the same kind of elements. So I would say earth and water mm -hmm. and fire and air are, are compatible. Mm. And the earth and water signs are the um, Capricorn, Virgo, um, what's the other earth sign? Taurus, get yourself together, Linda. <laughs> and the water, mm -hmm. Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. So those energies are very uh, or organic. They're very into the earthiness of sex. They're very into sexuality mm -hmm. mm. and sensuality and intimacy and weeping and, you know, basically getting very emotional with each other. Whereas the, the air and the fire, you, you're an air sign. Yeah. Which, mm. which are you? I'm Leo. Fire. Mm. So the air and the fire signs are much more energetic, so they're often quite um, athletic in, the, in their bed. They often have toys and mm. they want to try different things and they're, they're, they get easily bored with each other. So they have to find <laughs> ways to, to sure. stimulate and keep the, the relationship interesting. And so, 
in terms of, you know, what are the factors that, that you've just kind of laid out, uh, laid it out for us, but what informs compatibility? And is, is it always, you know, foolproof from your perspective? You know, the, the more uh, details I have about your birth, like if I have your time of birth, your place of birth, mm -hmm. then I can pretty much work out who would be compatible with you more or less exactly because we're working with 10 planets and they all represent an aspect of your psyche. So if I look at where your Mars energy is, which is your mm -hmm. sexual energy or your Venus energy, you know, mm -hmm. they say men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Mm -hmm. We all have Mars and Venus energy within us. Mm -hmm. So if we look at where our sexual energy is and where our love energy is, and then we find somebody who has that to mm -hmm. offer us, mm -hmm. then we can pretty much find our perfect partner. Mm. So, are we, so we're t are we taking that emotional box, the sexual box, box. as well as psychological mm. um, and then into intellectual as well? Indeed. Yeah. And I mean, the thing about relationships ultimately is that everybody has to have good sex because if you're not having good sex, you're going to cheat on somebody eventually. Mm. Mm. So personally, I think that sex is something we ought to focus on much more in terms of the way that we relate to each other because yeah. we're not taught by our parents, we're not taught at school, Nobody We're not says taught that. how to be good lovers. Yeah. And so people who are hopeless lovers have basically got, my goodness, have basically <laughs> got pornography, I suppose, to study mm. from, which is not realistic sex at all. Mm. So essentially, we're, we need to learn how to, uh, there's a book, in fact, called The Five Languages of Love. I can't remember who wrote it. Yes, but he, we've yeah. spoken about the five languages, ah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, he talks about which, which aspect is feels like love for you mm, and absolutely. and you know being touched and physical intimacy is is one of the languages of love and not everybody needs it mm. but everybody needs good sex they just need to define what good sex is for them can you establish compatibility if it is not natural or organic can you is that something couples can work on you can certainly work on it you know sometimes i can look at a a couple of charts and think <laughs> <laughs> um they're going to really have to work at this mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes people are so afraid of change that they're willing to make those kind of efforts mm -hmm. to change themselves, to adapt themselves. So, but generally, if, if you're completely incompatible, it's, sure, it's very difficult to sustain yeah. a good relationship. So uh, we asked you to send us uh, your questions. Uh, Fazile and Corsi sent us the Ooh. following video mm -hmm. for you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Fazile. I'm an attorney by profession. And I would classify myself as pansexual. Um, I'm also a Leo and I've probably dated every star sign under the sun. So basically what I want to know is what the stars have um, in line for me. Mm. So Leo, Fazile, what does that mean again? Sorry, I'm really not good with star signs. That's fine. Uh, Leo, so she's born in July, late July. Mm -hmm. uh, Leo is a fire sign, but the thing about Leo is that they are performers. No Leo with any sense of self, and they all have a very powerful sense of self, would ever allow themselves to be a bad lover. So they make sure they're good lovers. They figure it out. They find out. Mm. So, you know, just know that Leo's always know exactly oh, what they're doing. Some so, <laughs> wow, you so hurt, my <laughs> Like. <laughs> <laughs> And now Fazile, and so the moon sign will tell you what your emotional needs are. So Fazile's moon is Aquarius. So that means that she's looking for someone to talk to. So I, I was asking uh, back there what, what pansexual yes. meant. And I was told that it means that you're intellectually compatible, that you're not necessarily one gender or another, mm -hmm. that you're interested in, in each other's minds. So there we go. There she is with her Aquarian, her Aquarian energy saying, I want to connect with your mind. I want to be able to talk to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, often an Aquarian will come home at night and his wife or husband will say, where have you been? You know, until four in the morning. And he'll say, I was talking to somebody about the meaning of life. And he'll be perfectly honest. That's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Because Aquarians are, are often turned on by brilliant ideas and, and companionship and someone they can talk to. So Fazile uh, is not going to have any luck, I think, until the end of next year, just saying. Okay, okay. so just be prepared for the dry spell. <laughs> yeah. okay. So which star signs are the most sexually compatible with each other? And, and, and this follow-up question is, how do you know if you're in a relationship with Guti? You guys are just, we are sexually compatible here. Well, hopefully you would have figured that out when you got into bed together. <laughs> <laughs> So which okay. You so which, right into into that that line. So, yeah, so which star signs are the most like where sparks fly off? I think 
the natu naturally the best lovers are the Scorpios and the Taurians. Mm. And of course the Leos who will do it because they're performers and they like to perform. So they Speak. will be great in bed. But the, the natural sensualists are the Scorpios and the Taurians because they understand the body, they understand sensuality and touch. Are they good for each other? <laughs> <laughs> In a word, that's no. a hard no. Yeah. <laughs> no, because there's also a lot of ego involved in sex, you know. We want to be thought of as great lovers, we want to be thought of as sensual, as desirable. We need the kind of affirmation that we get from each other. So if you mm. put a Scorpio and a Taurus together, they're going to want that from each other and they're going to, you know, their egos are going to clash. Mm. So I would say probably, anyway, it would be a waste to put two of them together. You know, we could split them up and share them out. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. But, you know, every, and Virgos, of course, are also very interesting. They also make sure that they know how to. So essentially the, the water signs and the earth signs are much more comfortable with the physical body. The fire signs and the air signs, so the air signs are Aquarius mm -hmm. and Gemini and uh, what am I looking at? Libra. And the fire signs are Sagittarius, Leo and Aries. So they're the ones who are action-oriented and intellect-oriented. They need to be able to talk and act and, and say, let's try these fabulous new handcuffs and you know, all this stunning new dildo that I've just found. So they want to explore and experiment. <laughs> Whereas the, the sensualists, the other ones, want to melt into each other and become one. Uh, okay. Boring! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now the compatibility thing, uh. is that set in stone? So if I'm born under the star sign and you're born under another star sign and our compatibility doesn't seem to be written in the stars, how do we, is there something you can do to enhance your sexual compatibility? Absolutely. Um, you know, in the, in the astrology books, you will see that the, the opposite signs are often recommended as perfect lovers for each other because... Mm -hmm you know, you kind of complete each other. What I don't have, you'll have. But they will be very, very difficult relationships mm. because basically they're so different from each other sure. that they're going to drive mm. each other nuts. But they can work on, you know, complementing each other with whatever the other one hasn't got. But certainly everybody can work on relationships. I think, you know, if you look at in the old days how many, how many marriages were arranged and you just make it work. We can all make a relationship work if we want to. Mm -hmm. But I do think the most basic element is good sex. And I think that's often missing in, in so many relationships because we're too afraid to ask for what we want or we're too afraid to say, are you mad? Don't touch me there or mm -hmm. yeah. whatever. You know, we're, we're kind of inhibited in terms of the way we communicate sexually. And that's the way we can improve our relationships, I think, is, is by talking to each other or Linda, you know, guiding someone's hand. You Linda, know. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just grateful you came here on Trending SA to basically say that Aquarius are actually ahead of their time <laughs> and everyone <laughs> actually deserves us in their life to um, actually carry them forward. Yeah. We've been doing that for a few years and Elma and I are just here to do that. Okay. Thank goodness for you. Praise yeah, the Lord. Thank you. Oh my goodness. We are living... You are such a sport, Linda. Oh my goodness. We're never going to hear the end of this. But thank you, Linda. We appreciate you setting up a refrain that Mobley will sing all the way into 2021. Putting you it was forward. lovely to have you here. After the break, we are joined by a couple that will have you glued to your screen. They are young, unconventional, and they have an interesting take on relationships. It's actor Nyaniso Dede and his wife, Yana Faye Dede. We'll see you next. still tuned into Trending SA. This week we've been talking about sex and intimacy and commitment amongst particularly millennial couples and we wrap up the conversation with a young couple navigating their marriage in a millennial age. A multi-talented actor and theatre maker Nyaniso Dede and wife Yana Faye Dede have been married for over two years and they now join us in studio. Welcome guys. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. So let's talk about your marriage. You've been married for about two years yep. and we, as I said, have been having all of these conversations about compatibility. Why get married in a time where there are so many ways of expressing commitment? What is it about your relationship 
that kind of got you to a point where you're like, the next step is married? I'm guessing you propose. Are you traditional like that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a story. Is there a story there? <laughs> Did you propose? Damn it. Just preach it, Lida. Um, okay, look. We both, pro we both proposed <laughs> to each other at the same time, um, but she got down on her knee first, and we got into a big argument about this, but, but this, that's the true story. Defend yourself. So the true story is, I got down on one knee, he got down on one knee, I said to him, will you marry me? We'd been having a conversation about marriage. It was, it was, it was a, a, quite a, like, interesting setup. We were in the kitchen, we'd just come back from a veggie shop, and we were, like, talking about marriage, and he said to me, do you still want me to do the whole proposal with a ring thing? And I was like, I don't really feel like that's what we're about. I don't mm. really feel like I want to wait mm. for you. To, like, we're having a conversation about marriage already. Should we just both do this? I said there and then I got down on one knee. He got down on one knee. I said, will you marry me? And he went, is that it? You're supposed to say more than that. And I said, okay, take, take it away. Like, you, you lead the way. He shared a bunch of romantic, beautiful words about the journey that we'd shared. Said, will you marry me? I then did the same. And then he like kissed me and ran off, ran off to a boys night to go and yeah, spend the evening with his friends. So I'd say, a... I'd say also like <laughs> a, a big reason, I think we share this about why we got married is both of our parents never got around to doing it and mm. it was something that was burning in us to do it mm. and I guess in, in the millennial spirit it happened in a millennial way, in a we, millennial way. she got down on her knee and <laughs> <laughs> so throughout this week we've been talking about sexual compatibility yeah. and we've been talking about intimacy and commitment um, what does sexual in, um, compatibility and, and, intimacy mis and intimacy mean to the both of you Hit it. I feel like it's about having a conversation. Mm. I feel like sexual compatibility is just a, it's a form of communication. It's a, a way of interacting with one another. And, you know, to, to be intimate with one another is just another way of exchanging who we are mm. and interacting together. I feel like sexual compatibility is as important as conversational compatibility. Mm. I feel like it's like, how do we meet as two humans in this world? Yeah. And that's one facet of it. I feel like um, there's, there's electricity, natural electricity between mm. people, like mm -hmm. um, the attraction that happens. But then also comes the work that we both put in to communicate other things that the electricity doesn't get to. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that I guess we come to learn to need to practice. Mm. Let's go to the lowest of them all, right? Where you guys, you, you guys have been honest about them. Mm -hmm. How did you guys heal past that? Like what's the navigation process around that? Self first. It always starts with self. Any relationship, mm. it starts with self. The relationship that you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. And our lowest lows, were a time when boundaries were being crossed immensely because we weren't honoring our own boundaries. We weren't able to hear ourselves. We weren't mm. able to truly stand for what, what it is that we want. What kind of boundaries? Every individual's boundaries are different. And sometimes we get so uh, caught up and messed up by the idea of setting our boundaries, um, sort of comparing them mm. to what we think they should mm. be. And, um, the moment that you start listening to your unique boundary, like, mm. I hate it when you put your toothbrush that way. <laughs> and you know, logically, according to what we've been taught, that's not a real thing to be irritated by. But like, if we really are honest with ourselves, but like, I don't like that thing. And you can get into a journey about why you don't mm. like it and stuff like that. But just having the honesty with self to communicate that with yourself first, mm. and then therefore to whomever it is that you're relating to, so that they can help you honor that boundary. Well, yeah. We're gonna go to mm -hmm. a net break, but I just wanna be naughty just a little bit. When you guys were getting married, you were marrying a Kosa man. Did your family expect the cows? <laughs> I actually offered and her mom said, no, it's cool. And then she came down because she'd never been to South Africa before. She came down and then she's like, oh, I could have gotten 20 cows. I'm like, you could have, but yeah. oh well. But she said no. Okay, cool. We're going to go to a quick ad break. And when we come back, we continue our conversation with Nyanisa and Yana Tete. Don't go anywhere. It doesn't 
stop. Welcome back. You're still watching Training SA on SABC3. Millennials have romanticized the idea of having a perfect relationship, a perfect partner, <laughs> and modern digital technology and how much we see of each other's relationships online have such a big impact on what we want for ourselves. Mm. You guys have really opened up about your own relationship mm -hmm. online. Um, how do you know, we were talking about boundaries just before the ad break, how do you know where that boundary is on letting people in? Because you are so generous in sharing. Is there a point at which you kind of have agreed, this is what we won't open up about? Yes. I mean, we often communicate. I often will, if, if I've written something that is exposing or sharing something about our relationship, I'll run it by Nyeneso first. Mm. You know, Nyeneso will do the same as well. So mm -hmm. we're often in communication about what we're sharing and it might just be like, hey, I tweak this line because I think it would sound better that way. But yeah. at times it's like, can you please take that line out? I don't feel comfortable with that. So there's a lot of back and forth between us, um, a lot of communication and it's very moment to moment. Mm. And how do you guys stimulate your sexual compatibility and intimacy, your connection in your relationship? My pleasure is not my husband's responsibility. And his pleasure is not my responsibility. If I'm feeling a lack of pleasure, then it's for me to actually connect to my body and feel beautiful and do what I need mm. to do to be able to approach my husband in a way that is yummy and enticing and inviting and that allows for a conversation to happen. Mm. But there's never, there's never obligation. It's never like you, you have to. There's, there's never a must, and so there's a freedom that comes in that, in being able to just be, and again, it comes back to self. I am responsible for me, Nyeneso is responsible for him, I'm responsible for my sensuality, I'm responsible for my sexuality, I'm responsible for my emotions, and then we meet from a place of Please health. look into that camera and tell everyone in South Africa that. <laughs> 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 oh, yes. power. And what a note to wrap up the show. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. And to the people of England, you can still fetch your cows. <laughs> you can still fetch your cows. That's the message from um, uh, Uncle Mable. He really wants to get involved with this. I'll, I'll negotiate. He wants to negotiate. Um, just find him on Twitter. He's the emperor of Mlazi. He claims it. We don't know. That's how we wrap up tonight's episode of Training SA. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you more trends topics and everything else right here on SABC3. Same time, same place, same trio. Good night, Mzanzi.